Like a nice sourdough, investment in carbon removal is starting to rise. Uh, I've been able to, to see so much stuff over the last couple of years with uh, Y Combinator kicking off with their request for startups, seeing uh, Techstars, Nature Conservancy, doing their accelerator uh, that Nori was a part of. Uh, and, and most recently, more players are starting to get into this from the investment perspective. We've got uh, Chamath, uh, not specific to carbon removal necessarily, but uh, published a, a request for essays. Uh, Bill Kossel was just talking about uh, carbon removal and cement a couple weeks ago. Uh, Creative Destruction Lab is announcing a, a program around climate solutions uh, with an interest in carbon removal. And, uh, and Apollo Projects is uh, doing some, some interesting seed investment into these big types of ideas. So I've gotten an opportunity to meet with a lot of founders and to review a lot of pitch decks. And I wanted to share what I've been seeing and uh, share some things that I want everybody, including myself, to get better at. Here's some mistakes that I see a lot of people making, things that leave question marks for me that don't really make me more curious or want to know more about the company. They, they kind of end with me saying, okay, well, I'll look at the next one. Uh, the first is be clear about your technology. Be clear about what you have, what you don't have. If it's patent pending, that's, that's fine. If you've got a patent, great. If not, you can make that clear. Uh, the hand wavy stuff, as a, as a person reviewing pitch decks, you can see right through it. It's just, it's, you know, what do you have? Who invented it? Um, you know, is it, is it in development? How much R&D is needed? Uh, so that's one, you know, tell, tell, tell me about the technology. The other thing I think is a mistake is not taking the opportunity to share where your, uh, where your gaps are and, and how you're going to fill them. Uh, if somebody reviews your, your pitch or reviews your company and says there's some red flags, those aren't things that are unfixable. Those aren't things that are, that are bad. Those are just questions that come up that you need to be able to address and you need to be able to speak to in a way that's, that's convincing and says, okay, look, for example, we don't have any patent right now. We don't have a technology right now, but here's how we're gonna build in spite of that. We're gonna work on uh, creating a patent. We're gonna work on documenting it. Or we're working with a lab to acquire a technology. Uh, another red flag would be, hey, we don't know who's gonna buy this stuff. Here's an idea about how we're gonna pursue that. Here's how we're gonna build that out. Here's when we're gonna build that out. Maybe, maybe we really just can't take that, uh, take that on right now. We need to prove out the technology and then we're gonna figure out the market. That's okay, just speak to that. Next is, you know, passion counts for a lot. There's these, uh, in an application, you get like a one minute video or a two minute video. I've made these for Y Combinator applications. Uh, and I never really got to understand what the, what the point was really. But having been on the other side of this and be able to see some of these videos, it really is about just letting your passion come through and, and making a clear uh, story and a case for what you're building. One thing that I've seen is often people try and cram their whole plan into the one minute. And that one minute is kind of like a first date. It's not about getting married. It's just about getting to know the person a little bit and thinking about, okay, maybe here's some questions that I have going into your pitch deck, going into hearing more about your, more about your company. Uh, we just had a great event with, uh, with Air Miners on, on Wednesday. We had two of the Carbon 180 Entrepreneur in Residence come and speak, Kristen and Aaron. Uh, and oh my gosh, so much passion, so much clarity. You often don't get the opportunity to do that in an elevator pitch or in an uh, application process or something like that. But the more that you can, the more you can find the channels for that, whether it's in the video, your slide deck, your emails, uh, your website, uh, let, that, let that shine through, let your technology, your solution speak to that. It doesn't matter how early you are to start pitching and telling your story. The main thing though is to be credible for where you're at. If you just started learning about carbon removal two weeks ago, that's totally fine. Just say that and to say where your initial thinking is and to say what you need help with. Sure, maybe if you're two weeks in, you probably aren't at a startup stage yet, but maybe you are. That doesn't matter. Like that works just again, like create a clear story, uh, figure out what the what the gaps are in your, in your plan, figure out the red flags are in your plan, figure out how to address them. Imagine if somebody like Richard Branson came in and they said, you know what, I've spent, uh, he says, I've, I've spent the last month learning all about director capture and I want to launch a director capture company. That's somebody who brings a lot of network. They bring, bring a lot of other connections, other ideas. Sure, with director capture in particular, he only has a month of experience, but what else is there that he's bringing to the table to, to create that, 
curate that story. So if you're early, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you're early, don't try and act like you've been doing it for a year or 10 years. Like if you're early, that's okay. Own it, speak to your previous experience, speak to your network and, and speak to what you will be able to create. One other great thing is get feedback on your, your application, on your pitch, on your story uh, before, you, before you go out to that investor or go to that, that application. We have an investor roundtable coming up with Air Myers on August 12th. So check out conference.airmyers.org to, to hear more about that. We're gonna have a panel of investors, people that are putting money into carbon removal startups. And we wanna hear about what they see as, as challenges, opportunities for entrepreneurs working in carbon removal. We've got early stage, we've got mid stage. Uh, these are all people that are on the ground thinking about from initial idea to scaling it up. How do, we, uh, how do we build an ecosystem where those companies can get the financing that they need? So check out that event uh, if you're interested as a, as a founder or an entrepreneur, or even if you're just curious about how the investment process works. Maybe you wanna be uh, to join the, join the call uh, from Chamath to, to help vet and, and find companies that are building climate solutions. So check that out at conference.airmyers.org. And then lastly, this depends on, on who you're talking to, but the idea that the climate is changing, I got it. The idea that we need to remove carbon dioxide from the air. If you're looking at these programs coming out of Y Combinator or Greentown Labs, they got it too. And anybody they have that's going to be talking with you, they kind of get it, at least at the surface level. So if there's, if there's something different that you can bring to the table, maybe for example, you're focused on just methane or, or maybe you're focused on some other uh, environmental problem that's in the sphere of carbon dioxide, that's great. But for the most part, yeah, we got it. 415 parts per million of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and we need to start pulling it out. We need to go carbon neutral, we need to go carbon negative. Uh, you know, just delete the, delete the stuff at the beginning. You don't, you don't really seem to need it. One other takeaway too is, is in terms of pricing, a lot of people seem to rely on a government setting a, a price for carbon. I think that is something that, that warrants a slide, warrants discussion is who is going to pay for this. Um, while I, I don't think you have to make the case for that we need to pull carbon from the air, uh, I think it is important to make a case for what your vision of the future is in terms of who pays for that and how it happens. So one other caveat is like, I can say, you know, I don't do this all the time. It's not like my profession is reviewing startups. But the, the thing I can say is that it's actually very few people's uh, profession to review startups pulling carbon from the air. And there's many, many new investors who are working on learning the ropes and, and learning what to, what to vet. Um, so with that, there's a little bit of a caveat on the whole, like the story of climate and that the climate is changing. I think you probably do need some of that uh, for the, for the, depending on the audience, but there are a lot of new investors. There are a lot of new people trying to figure this out. Um, so if you can get feedback from somebody, that's helpful, somebody like me, but they don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. That's something that came up during the Air Myers event with, uh, with Kristen and, and Aaron was, there is no playbook for this. We are writing the playbook, you're writing the playbook as we figure this out. Uh, whether you're an investor, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a scientist or an engineer, there is no playbook. We need to create the playbook from scratch, from experience and from our vision of what the world can be. So thank you for, for being a part of that and check out the next uh, Air Myers event. Lastly, my friend John Sanchez developed the Carbon Removal Academy. He launched it this week. Looks really cool. Uh, if you are interested in topics in carbon removal, but you want to do a, a deep dive, but you're not sure where to start, he's built this really trustworthy guide that you can you can be you can enter at these three different levels up to carbon master if you have a lot of time to develop uh, to develop your thinking, or if you just got 15 or 20 minutes, he's got some uh, some resources that you can check out too. So check that out at carbonremovalacademy.com.